Hi, and welcome back to Lesson 4 of Rampant Design Tools' full line of Final Cut Pro X training. I'm Stephanie Mullen, and in this lesson, we're going to focus on how Final Cut analyzes and corrects clips as they are imported. Now, we all know that even with superior pre-production planning, not all media will be free from defects. We are talking about that camera shake, the color balance, the shutter roll, and everything else that causes editors to pull their hair out. Fortunately, Final Cut has some pretty powerful devices that analyze and correct many of these problems and lets you keep some of that hair attached to your head. Let's take a look at what Final Cut can see and help us fix. All right, let's open up Final Cut. And we're gonna import some footage into our event library. So I'm gonna right click, import media. And what we're looking for is our spa footage. So let me double click there. And I want to select everything, so I'm going to shift select everything and click import all. Okay, this brings up our media dialog box. We've seen this before. First, I want to create a new event. I'm going to call this spa footage. I'm going to copy my files. I'm going to keep the import folders as keyword collections deselected. As you can see here, we don't have any folders back here, so it's not going to actually do anything. So I'm going to leave that blank. We're going to talk about transcoding a little later, so I'm going to leave those blank for now. I'm going to deselect all of these because we're going to actually talk about the video options right here. I'm going to talk about them one by one and explain them. Let's start out with analyzing for balance color. We're going to click this. Okay. By examining the color balance of each clip, Final Cut is basically looking for the contrast by comparing the highlights and shadows and also looks for any color cast tints in the clips. These automatic fixes can save valuable time in the edit bay, so it's pretty nice. So that's the balance color. Now, if we select the find people option, what this does, it's gonna basically apply keywords to your shots, to your clips, based on uh, what, what it sees, what Final Cut sees. Um, basically, it's looking for the number of faces within your clips. It's also gonna identify the shot type and framing. So do you have a wide shot? Do you have a close up? Do you have a medium shot? Do you have one person in your shot, two people, it's, is it a group? That's what this is gonna do. Now if we also click this consolidate find people results, what's that gonna do is it's gonna apply the keywords from your find people search right here, but it's gonna base it on a two minute range. What that means, and I'll give you an example, if you have a person coming in and out of your shot, in and out of your camera view, you don't want a keyword for every single time they, sh they step in front of the camera. You want just a keyword for the entire shot. It's the same person coming in and out, so, you want it to be under one person, not one person, one person, one person. So that's what this consolidate find people results does. It bases it on a two minute search, which is really nice. Okay. The last thing we're going to select is the create smart collections after an analysis. Let me click that. What this is going to do, we're going to learn more about what smart collections are. But for now, all you need to know is that the smart collections are going to group the results from here, from these, from your find people analysis into basically event collections or folders. Okay, so that's kind of a nice thing for you to do. We're gonna leave the audio blank for now. We're gonna get into that way later. We're not, we're not there yet. And we're gonna say import. Now, you'll begin to see your background tasks working and that's gonna be this indicator right here. And they're blinking up here, but right here is where you're gonna see it. Now, if we click on this icon, it's gonna bring up our background tasks window. And you'll see our transcoding and analysis happening right here and our importing media right here. Let's twirl this arrow down. By doing that, you're gonna be able to see all of your clips right here and the process and the percentage of them being done and analyzed. So um, when these are all finished, if you look down here, this will actually turn green. This is gonna actually show your percentage done. Right now it's still working, so we're gonna leave that alone. Now you can actually edit while your background tasks are working. We're not gonna do that right now because we actually need to see these clips and how they get analyzed. So we're just gonna sit here and wait. It shouldn't take very long. We don't have very many clips. Okay, now that this is done, let's close this out. You'll also see down here, here's 100%. I'll finish, let's close this out. All right, now if we go over here to our event, I'm gonna close these.
Here's our event spa footage. Here's all of our clips. If I twirl down this arrow, you're going to see a folder. This is that smart collection that you checked. Let's put it in the people folder. We're going to twirl that down. And here you're going to see purple icons right here. The purple icons are going to represent an analysis has been done and added a keyword to it. You're also going to see this purple line right here. That indicates to you that, in, that once you did your analysis, a keyword was applied. So we'll see that right there. Now let's take a look at what keywords were applied to which clips. As you can see here, we have group. So let's click on group. Let's see what, oh, that's a group. That looks very nice. Here's a medium shot. Very nice. One, one person in our shot, two people, and then we have our wide shots. Okay. Very, very nice. Very easy. And I didn't have to do anything. I just imported my footage. So that's really nice. Really simple. Um, just to but go back up here. Well, just to clarify, the purple line indicates that analysis keyword's been placed on your clip. If you have a blue line or a blue key over here, that means that there's been a keyword a placed, you know, placed on your clip. So blue equals keyword, purple equals analysis. It's kind of how I like to think about it. All right. So we looked at what did an, an, what Final Cut analyzed. Um, now, if you check, well, we clicked up here on all of our clips. You'll see that there's three clips here that don't have lines on them. And that's really important because they don't have any people in them. If they had people, they'd have a purple line. And as we can see, no people. So good job, Final Cut. You did your job. Okay, now let's look at the color balance that was applied during our analysis. You will notice that all the shots still appear to look the same as when I imported them. This is because the color balance has been applied, but it's not activated yet. We have to activate it. So to activate the color balance, you first select your clip. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at my clips here, and you can see that the outside shots, they look a lot different than the insides. There's like a yellowish tint here. See that yellow? And this is an inside shot as well. So I want my clips to really sort of match this feel. I don't want them to be different. So this is where that color balance comes in. So I'm going to click on my clip. Now we're going to go over here, and we're going to click on this inspector right here underneath your viewer. Okay, we're going to turn that blue. It's going to pop up your inspector. All your video and your audio options are going to be here. We don't have any audio, so we're just clicking on video. And right here you'll see it says color. And you'll see it says balance analyze. We want to click on that. And if you watch right here in the viewer, watch how it changes. All right, so you can see that that looks pretty nice. That's pretty close to my outside shots. The balance has been nice. The, that yellowish tint has been taken off. I like that. That's nice. Now let's do the same thing for our other inside clip, the yoga clip. Click on that. I'm going to say balance. Yeah, I like the way that looks. We're going to keep that on. That's really nice. Now, by doing this, it matches my outside shots better. They may not be perfect, but it gives me a great place to start when I start color correcting. Kind of takes a little bit of time away from me, so I like that. That's really nice. Now, let's close the inspector by clicking the blue inspector icon. And that's it for the analysis stuff that Final Cut can do when importing media. I did want to talk about one more thing, and that's the transcoding options before we're done. What I'm going to do is I'm going to twirl this up, and I'm going to actually start a new, I'm going to import media, and I'm going to start a new event. I'm just going to click on one clip so you can see. Okay. Here's our media import. Now, here's the transcoding. We haven't talked about this yet. Now, Basically, what transcoding is, is it's a way to create media files that are optimized for better performance during editing and rendering. Um, it's also going to improve your color quality for compositing. Uh, uh, Final Cut basically transcodes using the Apple ProRes Codex. This allows Final Cut to do more work with the same resources. Now, your two options here, you can either use Optimize Media, and basically that's going to transcode your footage using the high quality ProRes 422 codec. All that garbling words just means that it's going to optimize your footage, make it looking better, the best it can be. The other option you have is create proxy media. Proxy media is basically going to transcode your media into a lower resolution format. This is very helpful if you have a slower, older computer, but it's also very helpful if you're working with an extremely large number of files. For example, if you're using or importing a large number of clips, you may want to import the footage as a proxy. This way the file sizes are a quarter of the original size, which would save a lot of space on your computer. Now, you have the smaller clips, that's fine. You make your edit. When you're ready to export your final edit, you can actually up-res just the files you're using in your timeline. So you're not wasting all this valuable hard drive space and hard drive you know, resources on files that you're not actually using. So I think that's really nice. 
All right, we're not actually going to do that. We're just going to cancel that out and cancel this out. Okay, and that's it. That brings us to the end of lesson four. As always, if you have any questions or would you have a specific tutorial request, shoot me a message on Twitter at Final Cut Steph. I would love to hear from you. Again, this is Stephanie Mullen from RampantDesignTools.com. Thanks for watching. Thank <laughs> you.